This is on. Is this on? Yeah. Yeah, you're on. Yes. Yep. <laughs> 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 Do it again. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I mean, we got a bunch of Jeepers Creepers fans. Of course. Okay, so. good. Good. Thank you all. <laughs> and, um, you know, we were kind of wondering, you know, what do you think it takes to um, make a great physical performance? Because that's such a physical character. Yeah. I, you, I really thought a lot, obviously I thought a lot about this. Um, I just think it's just so curious. The very first time I, I got this audition, I was like, you know, my agent called and said, we got this interesting audition for you. Francis Coppola is making a movie. And I was like, first of all, sign me up. Yeah, right? Right. Don't care. Uh, yeah, I'll do whatever, <laughs> whatever. you know? Um, and I said, okay, send me the script and send me the sides. And for those of you that don't know, we call audition materials, like scenes that you audition with, we call them sides. And I was like, I told my agent, send me the sides. And they're like, well, we don't have any. I said, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you don't talk in this movie. I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? <laughs> like, How do I audition for this? And they said, they just want you to come in the room and be the character. I was like, oh. All right, so unfortunately I had like two weeks yeah. to prepare for this audition. That never happens anymore. Usually okay. it's like the night before, you know, you don't get any time. So it was really a luxury because I could kind of sit with it. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so what do we know about the character? Well, we know he's probably a couple thousand years old and we know he eats people. Here we go. Go. Yeah, you know, that's what you have to go on. I thought about it. So I thought a lot about, you know, okay, so he can't, he can't, he's not talking, he's not speaking, so he's communicating with his body. So everything he's, he does is a communication. It's a really interesting study as an actor because as people, you know, we're always communicating not verbally, right? Don't pay attention to it very often. So it's all in really subtle physicality. So and I thought about, you know, who is he? He's a predator, he's a super predator, right? Um, so I went into the animal kingdom and started looking at the behavior of different animals, and I was like, oh my God. I didn't want to make him recognizably any one animal, so I, I took pieces of different animals and I kind of injected that meant those mannerisms into what he did, and then I thought a lot about, you know, what is he communicating, right? Um, what's the actor? Um, just like a regular acting role. Um, and so that just kind of infused the behavior of the character, and I, I just, it made sense to me. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that says about me, but <laughs> after two weeks, I just knew how he moved, how he walked, what he went after, how he went after what he wanted. You know, all just kind of made sense to me. Um, you know, I think there's some sensuality in the character too. Um, he loves that. You know, he loves playing with that. So I just had a ball doing it. But it was a real lesson for me as an actor to, to bring all that physicality into it, behavior into it, that a lot of times we don't often think about, you know? So, um, and the Creeper friends are so awesome, they appreciate all that. You know, the producers are like, oh, uh, you know, you don't recognize him. We can stick anybody, stick put Joe in the costume kind of thing. Oh, you know? yeah. But the Creeper fans, they, they notice all the subtleties of what you bring to the performance. So it's really, really cool to have this fan base. Yeah, the horror fans are like that, same with the Jasons. All the Jasons acted a little different, right? Mm -hmm. Mannerisms, CJ's different from Kane, not that any are worse. Yeah. It's just different, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Warrington was even different than um, Steve, Dad. Steve, right, thank you. Yeah. I was trying to go Ted, I'm like, no, that's yeah. part four. Hello. You know, so everyone's different, so we know, we know. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't see your face, but we know. I appreciate that. We yeah. know, yeah. we're weird, we know. <laughs> um, but what was your audition like, like the actual audition? Oh, um, well, I told you a little bit about it, so I yeah, had a few weeks the to beginning. Part two. kind of let it marinate you know, in me. Um, and it's interesting, some of you may have heard this story before, but if you haven't seen it, my audition, they put it on YouTube uh, a couple years ago. So you can actually see my original audition when I walked in the room and I didn't know anybody, and they didn't know me. It was the first time I'd met them. And um, I was ready with the character. I felt like I was, I was there about 90%. That's the last 10%. I just like, I, something's wrong. I don't have it all the way yet. And I look pretty much like I do now. Longer blonde hair. I was surfing every morning and acting during the day. I was living in California and I was like, it just, I was like, I just don't look as intimidating as I want to look. So the night before the audition, in the middle of the night, two or three o'clock in the morning, probably, I woke up and I was like, 
I gotta shave my head. I gotta shave. I can't go in as a surfer dude, right? I gotta. So it was just an instinct, you know. And so I was. I had a roommate at the time. I walked down the hall. I was like, you know, get up. <laughs> you got things Doug, you gotta do. His name was Doug. Doug, get up. You gotta shave my head. He's like. Ah. Sleep, you know, and he's like, What? Wait, what? Like, what? Yeah. So, um, I got him, I got him to shave my head. And, um, if you've never been bald, it's an interesting experiment. experiment. If you have, you understand what I mean. It's something I, I, you know, I wasn't really watching him when he shaved my head, but then I turned and I kind of looked, think there's, I got a man back there who knows what I'm talking about. Um, I turned, and there, and there, and there, and, 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 I, and I, I just kind of turned and looked at myself for the first time in the mirror. And it's really interesting it's like without that hair it's like you, somehow you're more exposed you know and so it was just brought an intensity to some of the look that I wanted but then of course you know the top of my head was white it was like ghost white you could tell where the hair was I was like what is it gonna fucking work what am I doing now in the sun. Okay. So, so I woke up the next morning the audition was the next morning I woke up the next morning and I, and I of course I called an agent and said I'm thinking about shaving my head <laughs> After the audition, so yeah, and they're like, don't do it. I was like, well, if like, you don't get the part, you're, you know, we're screwed for the next four months. And I was like, can't think about the next four months. Got to think about today, you know. <laughs> so um, I was like, what am I gonna do with this head? And they had a makeup place, um, a famous makeup place. Uh, I can't remember the name of it now. So I ran down there and I was like, what? <laughs> Help, help. The ladies were all like, they were all fussed over me, and they brought the makeup over and they blended the head, the head in, and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, I was ready, and um, I walked in the room, and it was, it was like you see, it really was kind of like you see in all the movies about ridiculous acting, you know, people doing acting in movies. And I walked in the room. There's a piece of tape on the floor, and you walk in. I'm like, you know, sit down, and there's like 20 people behind the table which is kind of rare because a lot of times you just meet the, first, the casting director first, but they were kind of up against it. They'd been looking for this character for a while and they hadn't found who they wanted. So they were a few weeks away from making the movie. So everybody was in the room, which was great, but it's crowded. And you know, people are eating, nobody's paying attention to you. People are eating, they're looking at pictures from the person that came in before or after they're on a phone, whatever, you know, it's like you're not even there and you, I just walked in and sat down in front of him on the chair and Victor was there. He went, he, he was doing something and he looked up at me and he looked down at his picture <laughs> and he looked back up and he's like, he said, where, you don't have any hair? I said, well, sir, this character wouldn't have hair. Oh, oh, yes. And all of a sudden the room just kind of went, and everybody looked up <laughs> and I was like, I got you motherfuckers, I got you now. <laughs> So I said, you know, can I leave the room? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we can leave the room. I wanted to make an entrance, you know. And, I, um, and then when you see the audition, you'll see, and just my head comes kind of creeping around the door, and I, I smell first outside of the room. And my head kind of comes creeping around the door. And, and one of the cardinal rules that they teach you in, you know, acting school is that when you audition kids, you're never supposed to threaten the casting director. You know, you're yes. never supposed to invade their personal space. You're, you know, you're always supposed to respect them. And I was like, well, that's not going to work for this one. <laughs> so I came to the room and I just went after his ass. And I had him up against the wall and I was sniffing him. And you know, I just, um, to be honest with you, at the time I really didn't remember a lot of it. A lot of it. I was just kind of, I was really in locked zone. in, you know. And then afterwards. Um, the director said, uh, then come sit down. Went sat down in front of them and he said, so uh, we'd like to talk about availability and we're gonna make this movie in a couple months in Florida and I'm kind of interested in, are you free and what your schedule's like? I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, in my, I mean, I was, a, I was a new actor. I hadn't really done much and I would never, I was like, is he, so he was kind of giving me the role right there in the room. Nice. Which was really, really crazy. But then they, there was a couple of producers, of course, that weren't there. Mm -hmm. Like, could you come back in two, two days to you know do it? And then you were like, okay, now, now the the pressure is really on. You like, know, I gotta talk you got to, or and you can't try to repeat what you yeah. did. It's got to be something completely new. Um, but so that was a really cool experience. But a real lesson for me as an actor 
more than anything else about just kind of trusting your instincts. It's a life lesson, right? It's like you always regret it when you don't. You know, it's like an old actor that had been acting for years and was kind of a mentor of mine. He called me on my way to the audition. He was like, okay, whatever comes to your mind, doesn't matter what it is, do it. He said, the moment you censor yourself and start to think about or second guess or whatever, you're kind of dead in the water. That was the best advice I'd ever gotten. It's like, trust your gut, you know, be in the moment. Um, so that's a long answer to your question, but anyway, so. It's a good answer to my question. <laughs> More than I could hope for. And um, was there like a favorite scene for you to shoot in any of the Super uh, Papers movies? Favorite scene to shoot? I get asked this a lot. Mm -hmm. um, favorite for different reasons. Favorite in terms of hard, favorite in terms of funny. I have a few. What about favorite in terms of fun? Yeah. Favorite in terms of fun. Well, uh, the bus scene. Like I know it's difficult to make yeah. possibly have fun when you're wearing all that. And oh, no, I had so. a good time. Okay, there you go. Did it look like I was having a good time? Yeah. Because yeah. I was having a blast. But you also had an actor. Acting. A, but I, I was, but I was really, it's like, oh, look, you go to work and you fly all day. I mean, I mean come on, how could you not have fun? But I would say probably the, one of the funnest scenes was uh, all that crane stuff I did when the kids were on the bus. Mm -hmm. you know, I was jacking around with the kids. That was a blast. And, and then they they were then they had a little fun with me. Then they broke for lunch and they're like, "Okay, we're off. See you later." And I was hanging upside down on this crane. And I was like, "Wait, wait a minute." So that was fun. Um, in terms of hard, I'll tell you a hard one. This because it's yeah. a good one. So in the very first Jeepers, we shot it in Florida, as I mentioned, I think. In August is when we started. And in Florida in August, if you've been there, you know, even at three o'clock in the morning, it doesn't cool off, maybe a couple degrees, but it's still hot as shit, you know? And we're shooting in this basically swamp land. And I had, you know, makeup, obviously head to toe. And in the close-up scenes, they had me wear contacts that blinded my eyes. So I was completely, because they wanted me to look cataract. My eyes like an old dog, right? And just in the extra close-up scenes. And so I'd, do, I'd work out what I was gonna do for the scene, then they'd pop the contacts in. And it was like having like a white shopping bag, plastic shopping bag over your head. I don't know if you ever tried to look through a white shop, plastic shopping bag. So you see a little bit of shade when somebody's close to you, but other than that, you can't make out anything. So I was completely blind during these extra close-up scenes. And the scene after the car runs over me and I'm rolling, we cheated that shot. So as the car was rolling away or running away from me, I was rolling towards the car and it looked like the car just run over me, right? So they had the camera right up in my face, pop the contacts in. We shot this scene right before sunrise and the man eaters, mosquitoes, start to get to a frenzy before sunrise. And so um, I heard them come in I'm laying there on the wet pavement, and the cameraman, he's he's leaning out over the, the trailer, the process trailer, and he's holding the camera, so his arms are holding the camera. And I'm hearing him come in, and all of a sudden I hear him screaming, call action, call action, call action, because they're just attacking him, and they're attacking me, but I've got all the makeup on, so the only place they can sting and get to is the inside of my eyes. So now they start to attack in the inside of my eyes. And that was the hard, that was one of the hardest scenes because you know you're waiting for them to roll camera and it's like it was brutal. So, so like, your eyes were literally getting it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How long did it take the the you to recover? Like your eyes to feel good again after that? Well, a while. I don't really remember. It's so weeks. traumatic. Yeah. Hours. <laughs> <laughs> Get these fucking contacts out of my eyes first yeah. of all. You know? Right. And then uh, and I did a lot of work with those contacts in like the scene where I dropped down in the car in that first movie, I had those contacts in. So I was probably, that was probably an eight foot drop blind. Totally so I had to kind of, you know, obviously prepare for that. And that was a hard scene to do. Gosh. So yeah, <laughs> so many of them and funny ones too. You know, we did had a lot of just funny accidental shit. Like when I throw the head in the truck and I forget the head. Yeah. I mean, that's like Victor screaming at me the whole time. He's like, he wanted me to, he was very specific. Okay, I want you to open the doors. I want you to throw a body in. Um, I want you to, uh, then then I want you to throw the head in. Then I want you to reach back and put your hat on. You're done with your work. And I want you to you know, close the doors. And I was like, 
First of all, I need about eight hands to do all that. <laughs> so we shot it and I was trying to balance all this stuff. And after about four or five takes, I was just pissed, you know, and I was like, opened the door back up and I flung the head in there. <laughs> so we had a lot of those things happen that, that the, you know, the creeper obviously had a sense of humor. Oh, yeah. um, it's a little sadistic. Which I guess I am too, but that's so. <laughs> You're my friend. So yeah, yeah. So we're 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 all a little crazy. A little twisted. Yeah. yeah. In some the people, best way. Some people have a, like a natural governor, you know, when they know they're going a little bit too far. See, I didn't get that. <laughs> I never got that. So they're like, okay, you can stop now. You know? so, yeah. I want to go back to the beginning. Yes. The very beginning. beginning. Um, how did you get started in the acting in general? Because you started late. I did. How did this happen yeah, for you? Very, very. Um, I was raised in uh, in a pretty conservative uh, household, and you know, went to school, and this is what you did, and you know, you nobody became an actor or a musician. That was for other people, you know. That was something that was just on fucking Saturn, you know, for me when I was growing up. So, but I loved, but I loved it. I always acted in school, in high school. Um, you know, I sang, I enjoyed theater. I did all that in, 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 in high school. But then when I went to college, I was gonna do the right thing, right? I was gonna get a degree and go into business and all that. And I did. And I got into to the business world and I was in, I worked there for about five years and um, I got transferred to the East Coast. I was working in New York and just unfulfilled. Yeah. You know, just like, what am I doing? You know, what am I doing with my days? And um, I got, just got to a point where I was like, you know, I just want to do something that I love with my life. I just can't do this anymore. So I quit my job and I threw everything I owned in a U-Haul and I moved to California. I didn't know one person. My parents thought I was crazy, still do. Um, and um, I just made my way. You know, I, I got my way into an acting school there and just worked my way in, so the old-fashioned way. So yeah, pursuing like happiness and what fulfills you in life, like that's so important. I think that's hard for a lot of people. So. Well, looking back, and it's gonna sound hilarious. You probably heard this before, but looking back, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Just especially as old as I was. You know, I, I went out at 29, and the first agent I met there said, "Ah, oh, you know, you seem like a great kid, but no thanks. There's no way I would sign you." Like, why not? He's like, you're too old. You uh, missed it. You missed it. 29. It's like, 29. Wow. Washed up, you know, at 29 and pissed me off, you know. Um, but he explained to me, he's like, look, you're 29 and you're going to go in the room and audition against kids that have been doing this for 10 years. And I'm a producer and I'm going to hire somebody. I have to hire somebody that I know that can deliver. So here's, you know, exhibit A, the kid who's been here for 10 years, has a resume this long, even if you audition better, you're not gonna get the job. Because there's you, exhibit B, no, no credits, you know? And I was like, well, that made a lot of logical sense, but it made me mad. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the motivation I needed. Yep. Watch to me. come back and, <laughs> and show them, you know? So, um, and then I just got a break, you know, and was ready for it, so. And you know, what's something important that you learned um, during a set, during shooting, whether that's something important you learned about life or the trade or just something important that you learned? Well, I think for me, you know, acting has been a journey. Like I mentioned to you, I had a very conservative uh, upbringing. And I think the journey of being an actor, it's like somebody explained it to me once, it's like, you know, you join the circus, which I love. So you're around interesting people all day who are doing what they love to do. They're letting their free flag fly, fly. I mean, every single day. It's like, look, I mean, I know you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Um, Just a bunch of minstrels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the journey of, I've gotten to be around some of the most creative, coolest, messed up in the best way people. Uh, and that, for me, changed my life, right? It, 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 you know, taught me to understand, you know, the whole cliche, you can't judge a book by its cover. It's like, taught me to, you know, communicate and reach people on a different level, and um, I'm a completely different person. Uh, and I tell people this all the time, if I never would've gotten an acting job, it would've been the best thing I've ever done. It's, it's a life journey, really. Mm -hmm. 
so that's that's the that's the experience and you know I, I worked with you know obviously the director that I work with is a controversial figure um, but he's also one of the most sensitive talented people I've ever met in my life and and this journey has taught me to look for the that quality in people right so um, it's been awesome so before we turn it over to the audience, I had one more thing I wanted to talk to you about. I saw uh -oh. it in your credits. Uh oh. No, yeah, it's not. Right, it's not what we were right, talking right. about last night at all. All right, um, good. <laughs> keep guessing, guys. Um, I haven't thought about this movie for a minute, maybe like 25 minutes. It's been that many years. Okay. Um, and you're in a monster? Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, one of my very first she, movies. Yeah. She was with me, and I'm like, I remember, have you seen this? Yeah. It's been forever. <laughs> it was a trippy movie. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. tell us about filming that. Oh my God. Please. You're asking me about what I did 25 years ago. Yeah, I think hard. Oh shit. <laughs> um, you said I, it was I, your I, first. I do remember one thing. Were you scared? Was, it was, was your first one. I was late to my first day. <laughs> they never, you know, they, they, they never called me the night before to tell me what my call time was, and I was like, so then they called me the next day, and then they were, everybody was mad at me on that set for a couple days, so I do remember that. I don't remember, I met a, a couple friends that I keep in touch with today, but I don't really remember nice. that much about it. Yeah. yeah it's still how, long, how long was the shoot? Like, were you there for like three weeks. Oh, that's not that's bad. Not that's a while. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was just, a, I had a small part in that, if you remember. Yeah. So, um, yeah. it was kind of my first taste of the uh, big Hollywood movie. How did it feel? Did it hook you at that moment? You're like, this is it. Because you said that was your first role. It, it hooked me in a sense that I had a smaller role and yeah. I saw all the people with the big roles. And I was like, I want to be on that side of the table. Yeah. You know? Were you, a, were you a, an observer of seeing everything that went on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, learning from that, oh, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and just learning how, you know, on film, you, you can be really, you, you should be, it's all about the eyes. It's, yeah. it's all about the subtle communication that you do. And so I've watched, and there were some really experienced actors on yeah. that show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one I mentioned to you earlier, who was my mentor, I met him on that show. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. Audience questions. He's got them. Andy. Did you get to drive that jalopy truck? Or is that <laughs> driving it? That's a great question. Not till the third movie, but I did get to drive in the third movie, finally. Because <laughs> uh, the windows were blacked out, as you remember, right? You never see who's driving it, right? So, and I lobbied hard to drive that thing in the first movie. I wanted to drive that thing, but they never let me drive it until the third movie. I got to drive it. So, we, we cooked up a scheme one night. We were out, as I mentioned, we were out in Florida. And it was the fall, so it was football season, right? And you get a lot of free time on the set. You know, a lot of times you get in trouble. And um, we, we cooked up an idea one night that I was gonna take the creeper truck and I was gonna go to the 7-Eleven and get a six pack of beer. And then <laughs> I was gonna spin around the football stadium, you know, do a couple passes around the football stadium. And, and so it seemed like a good idea at the time. I was like, yeah, it's a good idea at the time. So, uh, hey, I was a creeper. I was like, fuck it, I can do it, you know? So, um, and then somebody got, I'll never forget, they got me, like I was headed to the truck. I was gonna do it, and I'm like, wait a minute. People have guns here. You know, they might not get the joke. <laughs> so somebody with a saner head pulled me away. But anyway, I did get to drive it in the third movie, and it was a blast. So it was, a, it was wild, though. It was, uh, and I wrote on top of it, too. I don't know if you remember that scene where I wrote on top of it. And that wasn't very fun, because it had a really, kind of a narrow, believe it or not, it was kind of narrow, but tall. Mm -hmm. So consequently, when it rumbled down the road, it did a lot of this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And on that scene where I had to ride on the top of it, in the third movie, you didn't have much of a budget, if you didn't notice. <laughs> we had about three million bucks to it, so it all went on the screen. I mean, we were all doing, I did a lot of my own stunts, unfortunately. Um, and so I did that stunt, you know, and when I got ready to do it, I was like, so how's this gonna work out? Some coordinator comes over and goes, okay, he had a piece of rope. <laughs> do that. We're gonna tie you to the top of the truck. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And then I got up there on the top of the truck. I was like, wait a minute. If this thing goes over, I'm not kicking out of this stunt. I'm going over with it. Yeah. And so, you know, that thing is rocking back and forth when I'm rumbling down the road. So that was a hairy stunt. I mean, most of the time I liked that truck, but that night I hated that fucking thing. <laughs> because, uh, and it rained, 
and so it was slick. I mean, it was really, it was, it was pretty spooky. So, um, so. Awesome. Any other audience questions, you say? Uh, with the third movie, there was a little bit of a controversy based off of uh, the director's past and uh, things that he wanted to write into the script. Uh, now, with horror, you were supposed to cross the line a little bit to make people uncomfortable, and there was petitions for the movie not to be made because of you know, a scenario he wanted to put in the movie. Did that affect the morale of the crew at all? What scenario are you talking about that you wanted to put in the movie? He wanted to write a molestation into the movie because he was convicted as a pedophile in the 80s, and so people wanted to uh, petition the movie. Well, I can tell you I read the original script. There was never a molestation scene in it. So okay. I don't know where you heard that, sir, but that's incorrect. I'm not, I'm not saying anything like I No, I'm just saying wherever that. you heard it, that source is incorrect. Okay. I, I've read the original script. I've read every version since then. There was never a molestation scene in there. It's, that's, 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 that is uh, uh, social media, buddy. That is the internet. That is the internet. That is, that is credit, the, 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 the feeding frenzy it is the cancel culture, yeah. which fucking sucks. My apologies. Sucks. I mean, uh, well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you asked it because I want to clear the air. Um, because that was not a part of it. Uh, and if you ever knew Victor, ever worked with Victor, ever spent any time with him, you would feel very differently. Trust me. Uh, as I said before, most talented guy I've ever worked with in my life, and it's not even close. So, guys should be making movies. You know, he, what he did was 35 years ago, it was horrible. I, I would never excuse that, but he went to jail for two years. And when he was sitting in jail, he wrote Powder, which is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Uh, and um, so that's the way I feel about it. So, but look, you know, we've lost a lot as a culture because of what we've been through over the last few years. We've lost a lot. And so we have to, uh, take a harder look at those things when we hear about them and not believe everything we read or believe what people, you know, sitting behind their desk in their underwear, right, on the internet, you know, and say, like, fuck them, you know? It's like, uh, again, like I said, judge a person about what you know of them to be true, not what you hear about them to be true. So, anyway, thanks for the question, though. Good question. I saw another one right there. Good. Did they ever explain to you what is the creeper? Because I'm still wondering what is the uh, idea of a demon or something ancient before man. Before man well, you're on the right track. That's that's probably about as much as I'll say about that because it's a pretty closely guarded secret. But you're on the right track. Um, so he's been around for a few thousand years, and uh, you know, again, there's some elements of a little bit of everything in there. So, um, obviously there's supernatural in there. There's a lot of human traits in there, which I, which I, I love playing with all that because I felt like- He had like, to eat, he was hungry. Yeah. What, he was you, hangry. Can you imagine 23 years without eating? Right. Or, or 23 years underground, yeah. right? Without any, about any yeah. human contact. It's like those little guys on my wall, that's my family, man. <laughs> you know, I'm a craftsman. You know, I got 23 years to do some sewing and some preserving, and you can just imagine what I'm doing down there with all those bodies for 23 years, right? Yes. But I love blurring the lines with, uh, I just think it's interesting and disturbing to recognize behavior in something that's doing something so, so evil. You're like, wait a minute. You know, I thought it would really be fun to have some really humanistic things you can connect to in there. It just twists the mind up a little bit more and, and makes it a little bit more unsettling and disturbing, which I really enjoy playing. But uh, the, the original idea, back to your question, was to reveal more about the character. You know, we, we have storylines, we've got 10 scripts about what we were gonna do you know, uh, the evolution of what you would see and, and show you a little bit more about who the character was, where he came from, and that was the original plan. With each movie, we reveal a little bit more and you see how we kind of did that for the first three movies. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, the wing pops up. You're like, where'd that come from? You know, and so that was always the original plan, but uh, but I will just tell you, you're on the right track. And I feel so. like in part three, they were explaining it more. Yeah. They were about to reveal what, because I guess they yeah. got, got mad angry because he doesn't want 
no way we can all to know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I have to ask too, you know, speaking of scripts, what were kind of your first thoughts when you first read the original script? Oh my God, well, well, I'll tell you, I, I don't know if you guys know, but um, first of all, the original script um, was terrifying, but it also had a great ending scene that when you, when you make a movie, they always make revisions to the script and they always, uh, and they color them different colors. So the original script is white pages, and then with each revision, they color them salmon, and they get really creative, you know, magenta, and you get, you know, and they list all the, this is the, you know, the chartreuse revision. Very like, cool. And so by the time you get to the set, you've got every rainbow, every color of the rainbow with pages in the script, you know, with the revisions. And I got to Florida to shoot it, and the guy was picking me up from the airport. And I said, oh, there's a new script on, on the seat on the back there. You want to take a look at it? And he told me to have you take a look at it. Be sure you, you read it. Like, I've read a million of these fucking things. What's, what have they done now? Changed a word and it's a new color. That's generally what they did. And you go, no, no, they said, you've got to read this one. Yeah, yeah. So I picked it up and I was like, oh, this one looks a little thinner. The script I've been reading. So there's about 14 pages at the end of the first movie that they cut a couple of days before we started shooting the movie. So the first movie is never supposed to end in the police station. The kids get away, Derry, Trish and Derry get away. They steal my truck. They drive my truck. And, and there's a giant chase scene where the creeper's flying after them and then I land on the truck and, and I'm trying to figure out which one I want while the truck's rumbling down the road. And, <laughs> you know, and then there's a train coming and the truck's coming towards the train. The train's coming. I'm trying to figure out which kid I want. It's a great dynamic scene. And it's awesome. And it's a human aspect. Which kid do I want? <laughs> and and um, they didn't budget correctly, and when they figured, when they got to the tip floor and they got to the location, they figured out it was like gonna cost us an extra three million bucks in like two and a half weeks to shoot this giant chase scene. And so they just like, we're gonna hack it off, we're gonna stop it in the, in the police station, and of course nobody's really the wiser, it looks like it was meant, you were meant to end it there. Yeah. But um, I actually have it in my booth, I have some of the original scripts, and I always tell fans when they buy them, I'm like, read the last 14 pages. Most people don't know about that scene. So that's a little fun fact about that that script. I actually thought Victor did was really inventive. You know, we had a, a big $20 million script we had written for the third movie. Most people know this. And we almost shot that thing like three times. I mean, we had it set up like three times over the years. One time we even started hiring a crew. We're that, we're that close. So we actually had, had some money, but not all the money. That, that got canceled. But that was a big script. And that script took off uh, where the second movie ended. So I come off, I'm on the wall in the end of the second movie, as you'll remember, and we pick it up from there for the original third movie. And it was great, it was called Cathedral, uh, Jeepers Creepers Cathedral. And you know the Creepers lair uh, in the first movie. This lair was as far as you could see. So they call it Cathedral. Like a giant, like a giant ancient church, right? And one of the when we were going to set and film the third movie, we were going to film in in uh, Santa Fe or north northern Mexico. They have old abandoned turquoise mines there. These giant mines, and they were just going to put bodies, thousands of bodies, on the wall for the creepers' lair. And cut to 2016 when we had we didn't have the budget to make it. You know, we went from 20 million to like 3 million. And so Victor's like, okay, we can't make Jeepers Creepers Cathedral. So he wrote this big, much smaller script as what you see we made. And, but it was brilliant the way he tied it in. It, it happened be between the first movie and the second movie. And you kind of realize the very first time, my experience of reading it the first time, your question, remember being in my house, reading it late at night. This is when you want to read a horror script, right? Uh -huh. Everybody's in bed, you know, going to sleep. I'm reading the script and I get to the very end and he get he after being through everything, getting through everything, he goes to get on the bus. I'm like, oh fuck. I didn't see that coming. It was so great the way he tied that in and then you see him, you know, riding and they're singing the fight song and you know what's what's coming. That was so great. 
Um, I was like, that's your drop the mic moment. You know, we got to end it, Victor. This is where we got to end the movie, right here. And just let, leave it with the kids singing and the bus, you know, going off. And he's like, well, we want to set up Gina for, you know, for coming back for another movie, which I understand. But I always thought we should have, should have ended the movie there because it was just such a great turn, such a great twist that I didn't see coming the first time I read it. So, yeah. So um, you mentioned you have scripts at your table. Yes. Uh, you had, I always saw that you had the part one and the part three up there, right? Right. Is the part three cathedral or is the part three the one that was filmed? The one that was filmed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't, I, since we never made cathedral, we thought for a while that we were going to make a TV show. So I'd love to read that, it's, just it's, as like a novel. Yeah, you know? it's great. And, and so what Victor did is he chopped it up, chopped cathedral up into, uh, I think it was 10 episodes. We made it to 10 episodes. So we had the whole first season which was the original cathedral script. So I, I didn't want to share that because, you know, we're still kind of holding out hope that maybe someday the TV studio will Let's put it into the universe. Yeah. So, Let's, yeah, please. You know, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. put it out so, there. I mean, we, I thought we were, we had a lot of interest and I thought it was a possibility at one point, but with all the controversy of things going on, yeah. it's probably, probably not gonna happen. So, right now. Yeah. Well, sir, I just have to say, you just made a sale. Like right here. Oh yeah. <laughs> I collect scripts. Okay. Right. Cool. And, All right. And I saw I was eyeing them, but I'm like, All right. Mm, All right. Kind of want it. Kind of really want it, but I also kind of want other things too, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm like, when you said the last 14 pages were in there, I'm like, sold. Yeah. yeah. Sold. Well, enjoy it. Yeah, it's <laughs> a great scene. <laughs> yes, yes. It's a really good scene. Sold. So you'll enjoy it. I'll, I'll see you later. <laughs> in the others. Yes, you? yes. How long did it take to get into the rest of the ensemble? Good question. So in the first movie, um, you know, it's all, it's not, it's not, people come up all the time, they look at that head that I have on the table, and they're like, oh, is that the real mask that you wore? So one of the great things about this movie is they did it all. Uh, Victor is a monster movie fan. Like he grew up watching the 50s, the Universal Monsters and stuff like that. So. When he set out to make Jeepers Creepers, he wanted to make an original monster movie. And a big part of that <coughs> is the makeup and effects. Is the character, it's, you know, we had a team of sculptors. Unbelievable, talented guys and, and girls sculpting this thing. And then they poured it in latex and it was all makeup. And, uh, and I had no idea what went into it, how labor intensive it was. So, I did life cast in my head, life tech cast in my body, everything. It's so, and by the time the, the, the suit went on, like the, when, the, when the hands come on, it's so paper thin that when you look at the creeper's hands, you see Jonathan Breck's veins. I, I just happen, happen to have really large veins, right? <laughs> so you see my hand, but it's the creeper's hand. It's that detail. And when they would put, put my makeup on, it was, you know, it was like five pieces just around my eye, individual paper thin pieces. And so it's a build, so it's a layering process mm -hmm. so that everything moves like it's my skin. So when you see me in the bus, you know, working with the kids, it don't look like a mask, it's like skin. And then they, they airbrush it and then they go, so, so to your question, the whole process for the first movie on a normal day is like about five hours to get in and everything else. For the big days where I had to wear the, the open face, that's like seven hours. Um, but it got easier when I went back to do the movie in 2017, make them in a practical effects got easier. And it went from, you know, 50 pieces to like five. And so it was, they, they were able to do it in three hours, which was, which was cool. But I just appreciate the craftsmanship that they put into making this movie. Everything's in the camera, very little CG. We had to do the wings CG. They originally had practical wings for me. Oh, I'm sure they did. And they're like, they were like, you know, 10, my wingspan was like 10 feet. And they're like, I was hopping around in a, in a, on a sound stage with these wings on. And I was like, I can't do anything. These wings, I was like, we can't do this. Come on, we can't do 10 feet wings. You know, and so that's when that's, you know, they relented and did CG for that, but that's it. I mean, and then two, we did, we had much more, much more stunt activity, so we did more CG, but most of it was all done in camera, you know, so. Any other audience questions? 
Uh, how did it come about creating the, the, the trinkets and the weapons that he used? Like, I remember the second one he had the little throwing star with the, uh, the tattoo on it. And then later on in the third one, your, your vehicle had all the traps inside of it. And yeah. Impaling like the people. That was all Victor. That was all in the script, man. He wrote all that in. I mean, it was, it was all um, part of what he wrote. Uh, and, he, and man, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a scene that you got, we didn't get to shoot that I really regretted in the second movie. You made me think of something. So when I take the coach in the second movie, um, there was a scene written into it. It's so fucking awesome. I'm so sorry we didn't get to shoot this. Where the kids are all on the bus. Coach is gone. They're all freaking out. Remember, they don't know what to do. They're all arguing about what they, and then they hear the coach's voice. I'm like the coach, coach, and then they all start looking out the window, and they see out in the corn. They see coach standing out in the corn with his head just above the corn, and he's calling to him. He's like, "Guys, help me, help me!" And they're like, "Coach," and then you pan the camera around and you see this creeper's hand stuck in the coach's mm. head, the back of the coach's head, like a puppet, mm. and he's throwing his voice. <laughs> you know, trying to lure the kids out and work in the coach's head and mouth like a puppet, right? More cool. human aspects. That's yeah. the shit that Victor wrote into the script. I mean, I'm not kidding you. I mean, it was stuff like that. Some of the stuff we never even got to shoot. Twisted, great stuff. So he wrote all that in about the, the weapons and, you know, because he, again, 23 years, what am I doing down there? <laughs> I've become an expert at making weapons out of bone and whatever I have and you know so that was all written into the script it's brilliant water and a schemer yeah baby <laughs> <laughs> time to do it <laughs> so any other audience questions out there um you in the hat so hi the, hello the potential dream scene did the creeper still ultimately choose gary or are you not at the risk of death? yes he did okay. yeah. very similar to, you know, how, how it ended, it was just like, you know, he took his time with it though. You know, you can't just decide. You, know, you gotta do a lot of sniffing. You know, so that was the crazy thing, was the sense of urgency as you're shooting, I can see it, right? The train's coming and you know the train's coming. And the kids are in the truck and they're trying to get away and you know, I'm, I've got reaching into the cab and I'm smelling dairy and I'm, <laughs> go over the other side of the cab and I reach in and I get Trish and I'm smelling it. I pull her out of the truck and I'm smelling her. And Good, well, chicken or steak, I don't know. <laughs> exactly, at the very end, I throw her out. You know, I throw her out of the cab and I'm just like, Psh. You know, I don't want her anymore. And she watches the very ending, which is uh, me still on top of the truck trying to pull Derry out from the train coming up a giant collision. And you don't really know what happens. Yeah until you see, you know, you know, Derry, you see him flip through my eyes and you realize that, you know, I've taken Derry, so. Yeah. Was that Victor's choice with Derry? Yes, yes, which, which I, and again, brilliance of Victor, right? It's the creeper, he's gonna flip the script. You know, like the very first time I read the second, the screen for the second movie, I'm like, wait a minute, creeper's on the cross, Right, like a scarecrow, and he comes up the, off the cross and he kills a little blonde boy in the first five minutes of the movie. It's like, who does that? That's a creeper movie. That's how you know you're in a creeper movie. It's like he's gonna flip the script, man. It's like, cause you know, you're like, I'm oh, sure he's gonna take the girl, right? No, this is a creeper movie. So, uh -huh. it's about the flavor at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> That's the flavor, yeah. Yes. So. He had his eyes. Hey, man, yes. I would have taken her if her eyes smelled a little bit better. Exactly. Unfortunately, they didn't. So. Right, yeah. So. All right, we've got time for one more. I'll let you pick. We got Me? Two. You. Uh, let's take two more. Okay. I hate shutting people up. Here. Yes, sir. Uh, did Victor have any uh, ideas for um, future movies after the third one? Any of his like, own kind of vision? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he had storylines beyond, beyond Cathedral. Yeah. Ah, uh, probably shouldn't. Yeah. You know, I think we still, you know, we still hold out hope, yeah. you know, that we'll be able to do more. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, life's funny. You never know, right? So we'll just put that out there and hopefully we'll be able to come back to it. But I, not really anything. I'm, I wouldn't want to share his, his work, really. Oh, 
you know. So, sorry. So, yes, sir. You. Yes, sir. Did, didn't you have your hand up? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Better be good. It's the last one, man. No pressure. So. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, in this scene, there was the creeper was supposed to have a line of dialogue in there. Yeah. What What was these? Was it when the scenes filmed and they cut it like like that? When they it was. Talk? Yeah. Actually, it's on the. Um, maybe some of you have seen it. I think it's on the deleted scenes in the uh, special edition of the first DVD. I think they included it, if I'm not mistaken. Can anybody confirm that? Have you? Has anybody seen that? Yeah? Yeah, I want to. I mean, anyway. I have, but it's been so long. Yeah, it's so, been but you so saw many it somewhere years. though, right? So we yeah, must have included so. it in the, yeah. in the, in the. I'm a special the, feature fiend. Like, yeah. Oof. So. And, and the line was, she don't smell too good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that one went all the way up to Francis, and Francis said, no, you're not talking. The creeper never talks. Oh, so yeah. Francis himself <laughs> personally cut that, and who's going to argue with Francis? Right. You know, he's probably right. He's, yeah. at the end of the day. I mean, I wanted my line, of course. <laughs> one line, you can give me one line, right? But he, he's probably right. There's a reason he's Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Can't put the words on. Yeah. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.